Uh, today's first talk is a sci uh, the last days in the Bible from the perspective of science. Eh? Okay, uh, I think it's, this is a little bit difficult topic, and but very important topic is now the day of the second coming of Jesus Christ uh, become near. Uh, the actually the in view of in view that the I'm a scientist and also I'm a Christian. In view of that, the I want to look at the the last days in the Bible, and then the I want to share the importance of disasters, importance of pandemic, the importance of the the history. Okay, as you know, is the the Einstein said the Bible is a great source of wisdom, wisdom and consolation and should be read frequently. So we need a wisdom and also consolation at the time, at the last times of history. Uh, so today I'm trying to discuss the uh, several important signs in the Bible about the last days in view of science. <clears throat> okay, this is the you know, picture about the uh, nuclear bomb as a simulation. You know, this is a very big disaster. So uh, must not happen, mm, but we think of possibility. Uh, you know, because of that, the scientists made Doomsday clock. Doomsday clock uh, is like uh, the, you know, the clock was created by US atomic scientists uh, as a metaphor for how close humanity is to destroying the planet. It is now closer to apocalypse than it has been in any, any time since 1953. Is in view as a time of 2017. You know, if you see here, and uh, 1953 US test its first hydrogen bomb, Soviet follow, follow suit. So it, it, you know, at the time is the, we realized that this kind of hydrogen bomb can destroy the, the our planet, like. And recently also, we have faced the possibility of a nuclear weapon. So we are thinking though, the possibility of a destruction of uh, the, our planet. Uh, I'm trying to select uh, the seven event or seven happenings in the world in view of the last days in the Bible First sign is the moral corruption, moral corruption. Uh, is Benedict, can you read? Yes. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one to five. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the lost days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The second Timothy, second Timothy is the last book. Uh, by the Apostle Paul. So he mentioned about the last days. He defined uh, that it will be terrible times, terrible times. What kind of terrible? Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, Slanderous, 
summing up, this is the moral corruption, right? Moral corruption. Hmm. And also lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's the, you know, the, the key point of Christianity, right? So is the Paul commanded us to have nothing to do with such people, have nothing to do with such people. So is we, we have to pray like, help us not to follow the corruption of the last days, but only to love you and our neighbor. Amen? Amen. So we have many, you know, signs of corruption in this world. Okay, the second, second sign in view of science, the, the age of information, Daniel, okay, Vendict. Daniel chapter 12, verse four. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's now age of information, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very impressively, uh, it's 2,600 years ago, the, through Daniel, it God showed in many will go, we go, will go here and there to increase knowledge at the uh, time of the end. You know, it's nowadays, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, airplanes, automobile, uh, or trains, or, and also we have uh, a lot of information in computer and also even our small computer like uh, smartphone. Right? It's a huge information there, right? So uh, sometimes we meet academic meeting, in international meeting. It's very regular nowadays. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. So that is second sign. First sign is the moral corruption. The second sign is the, the scientific age of information. Okay, third sign is disasters, earthquakes, famine, and infectious disease. It's vendict. Luke chapter 21, verse 11. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Amen. Yeah. This is the, uh, you know, scientific data about the significant earthquake, the stronger than the 5.0 liter. And this is the, the annual increase, you know, uh, from 1935 to 2010, uh, approximately three times enhanced. One makes this kind of uh, things. And also Luke chapter 21 already mentioned that at the last times, there will be a great earthquakes famines and pestilence in various places. It's the many, you know, the earthquake scientists studied about the, the you know, what, what makes the, this kind of, you know, disasters like sequential earthquakes several times. If you see that this is the record and the, and the Alaska and New Zealand quite far away. Yeah. And the, also the Mexico and Greek. And this is the not far away. It's mostly, you know, the same month, like very sequential. What makes this kind of a sequence? Uh, recently, some scientists suggested an idea about is global warming induced the glacier melting and the change of cluster, eventually the sequential earthquakes. 
So, you know, this is like a very, you know, global warming is like a, one of the most hot issue in, in the planet, right? Yeah. And this one, uh, you know, give us a very big effect on the temperature or the rise of sea level or there are several effects as well as also the earthquake, sequential earthquake as well. And also is nowadays is we have the many new diseases like, it's the, this is kind of a new disease is related to the de destruction of creative order. Here, I want to give you two examples. It's the one is the mad cow disease. You know, it's the cow eating cow. It, that is very unnatural, right? Yeah, that is the breaking, the breaking the, the, the creative order. And also, as you know, the, the AIDS, AIDS is very intimately uh, associated with uh, the homosexual things like. These all things are, it's kind of related to the breaking, the construction order. And recently we have many infectious diseases like, uh, mostly uh, related to, you know, is the, in your area also the, the cholera and the, uh, in Korea, 2015 is MERS, but you know, more seriously now, we are in COVID-19 pandemic, right? Uh, that is the worldwide disasters. Is many people were suffering and even dead. And also our social activity and other economic activity is uh, becomes narrow because of this. But you know, as I mentioned that, God already mentioned that at the last times there will be great earthquake and great infectious disease like that. Okay, number four, fourth sign is the religious deception. Okay, Benedict. Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 to 26. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's many people say, oh, look here, it's the Messiah. Oh, there he is. Do not believe it. There are some false teaching, false prophecies. We call the deception, right? It's the, when I visited the United States, I saw some advertisement in the expressway. It's like that Jesus is coming. October 9, 2012. But only the Bible mentioned that nobody knows of that time. But they didn't believe the Bible or they didn't read the Bible. They believe the poor spirit like. We should be very careful. You know, when you heard something from other people or even other spirit, on some spirit, we don't know. You may think Holy Spirit, but you, we have to inspect that message in view of Bible. Bible is a reference, send out a reference of our faith. You know, some false spirit. And also Bible already mentioned that nobody knows. 
So we should be very humble before God. We should be very humble before the message of the Bible. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So, you know, and also Bible says, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah, the Lord in the air. So here it is, there it is, it's all, all false message, right? Yeah. And also said, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. Only heavenly father knows that time. So we have to keep in mind, if somebody insists, oh, I know the dead time, then he or she must be a false prophet or follower of false prophet. You know, yeah, it's the, we, the, the Bible should be a reference to our, our activity or our ministry, our understanding and our knowledge. Okay, until now, summing up, first one, first one is moral corruption. Second one is the scientific age of information. Third one is disaster. The fourth one is the religious deception, like, right? is that these all four different types of science are related to the little bit subjective one. Why I'm mentioning that is subjective means the how much percent, how many deception, how many disasters. We have no idea because the Bible doesn't mention about the frequency, doesn't, doesn't mention about the specific uh, digest like or age of information, how much age of information doesn't say. But now we turn to more objective science like uh, number number five, the, the restoration of Israel, the bandit. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has, has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In Luke chapter 21, Jerusalem will be trampled on by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So we have two kinds of time. One is the time of the Gentile and then time of Israelites, right? Yeah, actually, for you know, after Jesus, until 1948, you know, Israel territory was under Gentiles, right? But the state of Israel was established in 1948. So this indicate the restoration of the Israelite nation and also, Romans chapter 11 mentioned about the spiritual rest restoration has experienced hardening in parts till the full number of Gentiles has come in. Which means after the full number of Gentiles and the people, many people of Israel will be saved. That is a sequential in view of territory in view of salvation. 
for now, I want to show the number. This is the territory from 1946 to 2010. In 1946, mostly, the territory belongs to Philistine. And then turned into Israel. And nowadays, 2010, uh, most of the territory belongs to Israel. So it's uh, this prophecy in the middle of fulfillment. And also, in 1948, the Messianic Jew believers in Israel population, mostly none, but rapidly increasing, but not many, but noticeable portion of people started to believe in Jesus Christ. This prophecies also in the middle of fulfillment. So the fifth sign is under the fulfillment. That's the very important sign. So now you are see the, the fulfillment. Okay, next number six signs, signs of heavenly bodies. Luke chapter 21, verses 24 to 27. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be an in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, I mentioned already, Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And then, the lastly, at the time, they will see the Son of Man. Son of Man is Jesus Christ coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Between two this message, there will be a signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. The heavenly bodies will be shaken. So the restoration of Jerusalem and then signs of the celestial bodies, heavenly bodies, and then Jesus will come. So, and Mark chapter 13 already mentioned that the stars will fall, fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. You know, we have seen this kind of a similar one in already in Jupiter. In Jupiter is around in, in 1945, uh, uh, 1995, the Shemekar Rebbe come at a hearing. The, the Earth, uh, the, the Jupiter. It was very big event. So, you know, very big fire, right? Brightening, heating uh, on the surface of Jupiter. And al already is the, the Earth has this kind of a very big crater, the collision crater, like uh, the diameter is like around 1.2 kilometer. And also the revelation mentioned this kind of things, uh, the bandit. Great star blazing like a torch. Revelation chapter 8 verses 8 to 11. The second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. 
the name of the star is wormwood a third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter amen amen yeah i think it's the chapter a is mostly talking about the signs of heavenly father heavenly bodies here so you can see the second angel sound his trumpet and the third angel sound his trumpet and here you can see great star blazing like a torch you know great star blazing like a torch is like a fireball is when the comet or asteroid the heavenly body is hitting the earth's atmosphere because of a friction we can see the you know heating material like and the firing material like so we call it the fireball this is the also photograph you know this is a fireball like heating probably somebody already see the movie of the the great imp the impact and also the the Armageddon movie like huh? such kind of a movie also talks about the the collision between the earth and the, the planet or comet the, such, such kind of a collision is the would result in very great disasters the scientists simulate simulate the meteorite collision result is for example one kilometer size it generated the energy in view of tnt probably in the, the 100 gigaton is very huge energy, right? And the probability is not so high, but in once in a 200,000 years, and it results in global disasters and long-term climate change like. If you have the 10 kilometer, that is, just actually extinction of mankind so is we have a possibility of that but very interestingly the bible mentioned about the, the shaking of heavenly bodies is now until now we have learned several signs it's from the moral corruption and the age of information disasters and the deceptions and also restoration of Israel light and also the falling star like the heavenly bodies sign. Why God allow this kind of things? Why God allow this kind of things? It's from the Bible that the key message is repentance. Now it's time to return to God. Please keep in mind it's time to return to God. If now you are facing the it's a corona pandemic, you are prostrated, we have many troubles in several different prospects. So main conclusion is main conclusion is please repent. Please return to God. Okay, Bendict. Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 to 21. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Amen. You know, Bible said, People did not repent, did not repent. But God's intention means, uh, please repent. Please return to God. Because we are indebted, right? You are indebted. We receive the amazing grace. Sometimes we, we may fall down but we have to stand up again. We have to follow Jesus Christ. 
So we want to return. You want to return to God. That's the, that's the key point of the why God allows some serious gestures. Okay, last sign is the witness to all nations, the gospel. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Jesus mentioned that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. And then the end will come. Actually, this the, the this number corresponds to the number of unreached people. A number of unreached people are decreasing as a function of time. You know, that then means is the, the time is approaching to the end of the world. We don't know exact time. So this is the whole global map. You know, uh, India is here. Actually, the green and yellow color correspond to Christianity area, but the, the the red area is unreached or least reached. And mostly this area is Islamic or Hindu and Buddhism area. So we want to be humble before God. We want to extend God's kingdom, you know, in, in, in this red area as well. Okay, today we have learned the seven signs. Yeah, you know, knowledge is important to look at the last times. But I, you know, the, what is the most more important things than knowledge? More important things is to prepare for the end time. Matthew chapter 24. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have keep watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 24, and also Matthew summarized the signs of the last days and then encourage us to prepare for the end time. So main point is preparing is the keep watching, spiritually keep watching. Because we do not know on what day your Lord will come. So we must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect. So, the Jesus introduced four parables, which are familiar with you. That's the, this is the simple summary, and then we'll look into a more, little bit more detail. The first one, number one, servant who give food at the proper time, being faithful to the command of the gospel. Virgins who prepare oil, intimate relationship with the Lord by being full of the Holy Spirit. The servant who make profit out of their talents, being faithful to their ministry. Loving the smallest, being faithful to the command of life, love. Okay, you want to see it a little bit. You know, the Bible shows the way to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. Yeah, so we want to learn here for the spiritual awareness. Okay, number one, parable number one, faithful and wise servants. Benedict? Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 47. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant 
whose master finds him doing so when he returns i tell you the truth he will put him in charge of all his possessions amen amen yeah is now god is looking for the faithful and wise servant who is the faithful and wise servant the master heavenly father has put in charge of the servants in his household in his household is kingdom of god to give them their food at the proper time it's not physical food but spiritual food you know do you do you do you share the gospel are you sharing the gospel are you making the disciple of jesus christ that's the key point of first parable god call him or her faithful and wise servant amen it really do you want to be a faithful and wise servant then preaching the gospel and make the disciple of jesus christ amen amen yeah i want to hear amen yeah okay second parable is 10 virgin okay benedict yeah. matthew chapter 25 verses 5 to 13 the bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all become drowsy and fell asleep at midnight the cry rang out here's the bride bridegroom come out to meet him then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps the foolish ones said to the wise give us some of your oil our lamps are going out no they replied there may not be enough for both us and you instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves but while they were on their way to buy the oil the bridegroom arrived the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut later the others also came sir sir they said open the door for us but he replied i tell you the truth i don't know you amen amen yeah and this is very famous uh, parable one. What is the oil? You know, if you have the oil, you can make the light. You can see the who is the bride. And this is the spiritual awareness, intimate relationship with God. So being full of the Holy Spirit. Is the in holy places there are seven lampstands. The seven lampstand, there is a lightning there, you know, right there, the light indicates seven night indicate the Holy Spirit. Already mentioned in the you know Revelation book, chapter four and five. So this indicating Holy Spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you have an intimate relationship with God. So here, but he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. I don't know you means no intimate relationship. Right? Yeah. Okay, first parable stress on the preaching the gospel. Second parable stress on the being full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so the parable. The parable of talents. Matthew chapter 25, verses 23 to 25. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent him master he said i knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed so i was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground see here it what is what belongs to you amen amen yeah 
you know, is to we receive the, the spiritual gift from God. We, you know, everybody has a gift, right? Different gift. Somebody, you know, is good at playing guitar, or somebody is the uh, understanding the Bible is great, and the somebody has a good knowledge about Bible or preaching the gospel is. We have some different spiritual gift. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how how many or how big or how great. More important things here. The faithful is the important things. You know, the compliment is the same. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, not many things, with a few things. You know. Please concentrate on. Please concentrate on your spiritual gifts to use for God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Don't don't hide. Don't hide your talent. Don't use. Then that's the way of destruction. Okay, last parable, the parable of sheep and goats. Matthew chapter 25, verses 33 to 40. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those who are on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invited you in, or needing clothes, and clothed you? When did we see you, sick, or in prison, and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Is the Jesus is saying two groups? Is one group for heaven, the other group for hell? Yeah. Is this is the and also tell us how to love our neighbor? You know, I was hungry. You gave me something. If you see some people who are hungry, then please give me something. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, then you invite me in. I need clothes, you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, you came to visit me. So our neighbor, those who are in need, those who are in need. We, there are so many people who are in need in this world, in your country. You know, so I tell you the truth. Sir. Whatever you did for one of the list of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Eventually, they will go to heaven because there is the following Jesus Christ. Okay, summary. Mm -hmm. uh, summary is we today we have studied the seven signs of the last days eh? moral corruption. Science, age of information, disasters, earthquake, forming, infectious disease, religious deception, the restoration of Israel, the territory, in view of territory, in view of the salvation. And number six is the science of heavenly bodies. And number seven is gospel, within it to all nations. But is you know the more important things than knowledge itself. How can you keep watch and prepare? How can you keep watching and prepare? 
So we can summarize using four parables here. First one, be faithful to the command of the gospel, preaching the gospel. Number two, intimate relationship with the Lord by being full of the Holy Spirit. Number three, be faithful to their ministry using the spiritual gift. Number four, be faithful to the command of love as Jesus loved. Now let's pray. You are asking for God's mercy. Today we have learned the seven major signs of the last days. So please open our spiritual eyes to see the last days. But more importantly, we want to be spiritually keep watching and be ready. We want to preach the gospel. We want to be full of the Holy Spirit. We want to use spiritual gift for extending God's kingdom. We want to love our neighbor, those who are in need. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. May God guide us. May God lead us. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.